Hi friends, today I am here to discuss with you the electronic devices and circuit subject and we will start with the very basics of this subject and gradually we will enter into the depth of EDC. In EDC we have a lot of notations and formulas among all these we really get confused many times but if we will move slowly I am sure we will cover it one by one. So let's start with lesson number one basics of EDC. First is classification of temperature. We all know that temperature can be measured either in Kelvin or in degree Celsius. So here is a formula which helps in converting the degree Celsius to Kelvin or from Kelvin to degree Celsius. First is absolute temperature. In brackets I have provided the temperature in Kelvin as well as in degree Celsius. So for absolute temperature is 0 Kelvin or minus 273 degree Celsius. Absolute temperature is the minimum or the lowest temperature. It's always fixed. It's kept as a reference temperature most of the time. Second is room temperature. Room temperature varies from time to time or place to place or you can say seasonal changes and environmental conditions affect your room temperature and it's 300 Kelvin or 27 degrees Celsius. Third is ambient temperature. Ambient means surrounding. So ambient temperature is your surrounding temperature and it's 290 Kelvin or 17 degrees Celsius. Next is thermal voltage. Thermal voltage is also known as volt equivalent of temperature. Now why it's volt equivalent of temperature? Because your temperature can be measured in terms of voltage. So that's why volt equivalent of temperature. Okay, now we have a very important formula of thermal voltage that equal to Kt divided by Q, right? So K here is your Boltzmann constant and the temperature is always taken in the Kelvin and Q is the magnitude of charge. And in brackets I have provided the values for all this constant and when, I, when you are putting all these values in the above formula on calculating you will get thermal voltage is equal to capital T divided by 11600 volt. So what next we are going to do is we will see how thermal voltage varies when you put different temperature values. So I will proceed with 0 Kelvin. First I am taking 0 Kelvin as temperature and I am getting thermal voltage is equal to 0. You just can put these values and see obviously when temperature is 0 you will get your thermal voltage 0. Second, I am putting the temperature of 300 Kelvin, then I am getting the thermal voltage of 26 millivolt. Right, so what I see here is for a large variation in temperature that is 300 Kelvin, we get a minute variation in thermal voltage that is 26 millivolt. It's a minute variation. And the standard room temperature corresponds to a voltage of 26 millivolt. Okay. So, I am saying that thermal voltage is directly proportional to temperature. Next is your energy gap and in brackets I have provided the notations. Somewhere it's E subscript with the capital G and somewhere with small g. So, uh, don't get confused when you see the different notations. Uh, just uh, don't worry about these things. Just be aware of both the notations. It's a gap between the valence band and the conduction band. So it is called the band gap or forbidden energy gap. So let's make this definition clear by this diagram. Okay, the upper portion is your covalent band indicated with red color I have mentioned and the lower portion is your valence band. So what is energy gap is a space between these two bands that is called energy gap. Okay. Now what happens is the energy gap values varies for different different materials and in EDC we have two important materials are the germanium and the silicon. So we will see the values of energy gap of these two materials when we vary the temperature value right. So we are proceeding with 0 Kelvin. When 0 Kelvin the germanium energy gap is 0.85 electron volt. 0.21 electron volt 
एंड वेन आई एम इंक्रीजिंग द टेम्परेचर टू थ्री हंड्रेड केल्वेन ये जर्मानियम एनर्जी गैप इज डिक्रीजिंग फ्रॉम पॉइंट सेवन एट फाइव टू डायरेक्टली टू पॉइंट सेवन टू इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट एंड सेम हैपन्स फॉर द सिलिकन इट्स कमिंग टू वन पॉइंट वन इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट फ्रॉम वन पॉइंट टू वन इलेक्ट्रॉन वोल्ट सो वॉट आई कैन से हीयर एस वेन एवर आई एम इंक्रीजिंग द टेम्परेचर यूर एनर्जी गैप इज डिक्रीजिंग that's what i have concluded in the single line that with increase in temperature energy gap decreases so eg is directly proportion to 1 by temperature okay next is your electron volt electron volt is defined as the energy gain by the electron in moving through a potential difference of 1 volt unit i have mentioned in the bracket small e and capital v Now let's understand the definition with the help of a diagram. Here we have the diagram. In this we have a parallel plate capacitor that is A and B placed parallelly and this is getting charged with a voltage of 1 volt. Electrons as they have negative charge they will be deposited at the plate B. And electrons will try to move towards a positive side because they have already the negative size and opposite side attracts but hence a is insulated hence a is insulated that's why b cannot move towards a and whole the parallel plate capacitor is kept under the vacuum glass and whatever electrons will move from b to a is under the force of attraction due to the potential difference so we made a definition that one electron volt is defined as the energy gain by the electron in moving through a potential difference of 1 volt the voltage which we are providing for charging the parallel plate capacitor so i hope this is clear to you so moving to next uh, how this one electron volt comes like 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule okay the charge into the potential difference you know the charge is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb into 1 volt because we are providing the voltage of 1 volt so when you multiply both this it's coming like 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 joule electron always move under the force of attraction as i have already explained in the previous figure it's moving under the force of attraction so whenever electron is moving under the force of attraction electron gains kinetic energy we know kinetic energy is half mv square we all have read this in our physics subject and potential energy is mgh but when you talking in terms of edc electrons and all potential energy is equal to q into v on equating the kinetic and potential energy we get this important formula uh, friends i would like to tell you one thing that uh, this small small formulas which i am discussing with you it's very important uh, uh, like if you are preparing for your competitive examinations numerical based on these small formulas often come in the examination so be very clear with the notations units and formulas values on the um, try to take advantage of like this video i'm basically focusing on the small formulas so i hope this is useful to you okay moving ahead i was like telling you on equating we were getting the appropriate formula that is small v is equal to under root 2q capital v divided by m so here capital v represent your voltage and small v represent your velocity in meter per second okay so next topic is electric field intensity in brackets somewhere it's provided with this notation and somewhere it's capital bold e so be aware of both this notation it's also called as field intensity or field gradient or just simply field so by definition we have this formula that uh, e is equal to this thing volt per meter this is a unit of uh, electric field intensity and this is a very important formula many competitive examinations i have seen this directly asking questions 
so electric field intensity is equal to applied voltage divided by distance or spacing next is your mobility of charge carriers mobility means movement means how fast charge carrier move from one position to the other position it is defined with the formula that is drift velocity divided by field intensity drift velocity is indicated by this notation and field intensity is here this thing okay so electron mobility is always greater than holes you have to be clear in this thing that electron mobility is always and always greater than holes mobility and why so because electrons can travel faster and as they travel faster they contribute more current than a hole that's why mobility is greater than holes uh, we have electron mobility and hole mobility comparison between these two materials germanium and silicon so for germanium is 3800 for electron mobility and 1300 for silicon and hole mobility is 1800 for germanium and 500 for silicon so germanium from this data we have uh, certain conclusions we will discuss that germanium is having higher conductivity now why so why it has higher conductivity just because germanium has larger or you can say higher mobility that's why it is good for higher conductivity germanium is good for high frequency applications it's good for high frequency applications because it has wider bandwidth so good for high frequency applications next is your silicon it's high power handling capacity it has high power handling capacity and the next is suitable for switching application it's suitable for switching application because it has got better thermal stability okay one note you have to be clear on this is both the materials have good thermal stability but still silicon is better and preferred always there's no question of why because it's a statement you have to remember this that silicon is better and preferred last is i will tell you about under this topic is npn is preferred over pnp why i hope npn and pnp is very much clear to you npn is preferred over pnp because electrons are the majority carriers and better mobility so npn is preferred over pnp electrons are the majority carrier npn has electrons so majority carriers better mobility so npn preferred okay mobility of charge carrier always decreases with the temperature so we have stated this thing under the block because mobility of charge carrier always decreases with the temperature okay and now be very clear that the small m which i have mentioned under in this block is a constant and uh, m values varies for different different material so values of m we have different for electrons and for holes and for germanium and for silicon so i would like to say that be clear on these values because uh, in examinations like um, when i'm talking about ies they don't provide this values you have to remember these values for your sake okay so remember these values if it's given it's good for you if it's not given then all i <laughs> it's good for you i guess okay now we'll see a very important plot that's experimentally plotted your uh, for basically for uh, semiconductor when we are talking about semiconductor and the plotting is uh, for the electric field intensity and how your mobility of charge carrier varies right so mobility versus electric field intensity so I, in, in this whole figure uh, there's two important question th they can arise is what happens when we have a smaller electric field intensity and what happens when we have larger electric field intensity right you can see that your electric field intensity is 
going like 10 to power 3 10 to power 4 and going like 10 to power 7 and mobility is in a y direction so when we have a smaller electric field intensity your mobility of charge carrier will remain constant almost constant i've indicated with one you can see and for the larger electric field intensity your mobility of charge carrier is continuously decreasing you can see in the second part i have mentioned with blue color here these are the two important questions most of the competitive examinations ask from these graph so that's what i have mentioned in this line is for a smaller field intensity mobility of charge carrier remain constant and for the larger mobility of charge carriers decreases okay the next important plot is plotting your drift velocity with respect to your electric field intensity that is two for semiconductor make sure that both the plots are just for semiconductors okay and in uh, next lesson we will discuss the metal insulated in semiconductor so maybe you'll get confused later on so right now just remember that it's just for semiconductor so here is a plot now in this again plot what questions they can arise is in a semiconductor our uh, electric field intensity is gradually increasing right and again it's increasing 10 to power 3 10 to power 4 and on and on so what happened to drift velocity drift velocity is taken in the y direction and the electric field intensity is taken in the x direction so what happens so in the first part it's like i have indicated with this red color it linearly increases you can see here it linearly increases then in the second part it's sublinearly increasing sublinearly increases and finally the graph enters into the saturation i have mentioned here all the things which i'm talking about okay first linearly increases sublinearly increases enters into saturation Okay, the electric field intensity is gradually increasing and drift velocity first linearly increases, sublinearly increases, enters into the saturation. Okay, so it's all about lesson 1. We will move ahead with the basics in my lesson number 2. I hope that you enjoyed watching this and if you liked it, please don't forget to like it and subscribe yourself. If you have any comments regarding this video or you want me to focus on numerical part which would be important for your competitive examinations, so please let me know. I'll try to help you the best I can. And uh, okay then, bye bye, take care, and thanks for watching.